In this video for the SMFT-1000, we'll review the menu settings in the device. You can see that there's four things to select here. The first one is memory. This is where we can view any measurements that have been saved in the device. I have 14 saved measurements in here, so we can go ahead and take a look at those. I have some IV curve tests, some auto tests. These are all failed because I had some issues with the module manufacturer's data. So it's outside the 5% range for pass or fail that's set as a default in the device. Um, in here, you can view the measurements. So I can go in and view the measurements. An interesting thing with the IV curve trace, we can see nominal measurements. That is the manufacturer's data. And then I have the measured data converted to STC in the right column. If I hit the down button, it will also give me the actual measured data. We can see here that the irradiance meter was apparently not connected during this measurement, so it defaulted to 1,000 watts per meter square in 25 degrees C. We can see the table. We can also push the F2 button to go to the graph, and here we see the measured uh, readings in the graph there. We did have our PV module set in. It says the irradiance sensor was connected, um, but we don't have that irradiance measurement in there. In here, we can look at some measurements. I'm going to look at this IV curve measurement. So we just hit F1, the view button. It defaults right to the table. In the left-hand column, we have the nominal measurements, which are what the manufacturer's data provided. In the right-hand column, we have the measured data converted to standard test conditions. If you want to see the actual measured data, you just need to push the down arrow, and it will add the measured data to the chart as well. We can see that this test was done at 735 watts per meter square, 26 degrees C, so just above standard test conditions for temperature and below standard test conditions for irradiance. Um, good way to look through and see how the test went. If we press the F2 button, we can toggle between the table and the graph. In the graph, the blue line is the STC readings, that is the measured data, the black line converted to what it would be if it was under standard test conditions. And that, that green bar in the middle is actually the plus minus 5% of the nominal readings. That's what we would expect from the manufacturer. We can go through and review other tests in here as well. I did some auto tests, so I can go in and take a look at those. It will show the pass-fail for the three tests that were done during the auto sequence. I can also press down to look through those individually and get the, the more details on those tests. The measurement data is in chronological order, so it starts with the newest measurement and goes to the oldest measurement and we can go and view any of the ones that we want to look at in there. The next part in the menu is the client in sight. This is really important to enter because it is what correlates the data in the SMFT-1000 to the client in sight information in the true test software. If you add the correct client in sight numbers into the SMFT-1000 before you start testing, it makes it very easy to download the data later. So I'll go in and enter this client in the site code. You can move to the left and the right using F1 and F2. You can hit done by hitting F3. You can cancel by hitting F4. And you can increase or decrease the number by hitting the arrow buttons. So I'm going to cancel here and go back to the main menu. Device settings are where we have all of our device settings. You can select the units. You can tell it how long the device will sit before it auto shuts off. I have it set at 20 minutes. It defaults to never, and you can do less than 20 minutes as well. We have our date time, important for knowing when we took the measurements. You can select your language. You can adjust how you want the device to beep. You can pair to your irradiance meter here. This is really important if you have multiple SMFT-1000s and happen to grab the wrong uh, IRR2. 
which is our irradiance sensor, or if your irradiance sensor breaks and you have a different one and you want to repair it. Um, right now I have the IRR2 that came with the device paired to it. I could unpair that and pair another IRR2 if I needed to. I can check my firmware version. Currently I have the most up-to-date firmware. Um, calibration is for when you send it back to the factory and calibrate it. Reset file numbering is really important. This will delete all the stored measurements on the device. So if you go into reset file numbering um, and, and select that, uh, hit reset there, F1, it will delete all the data you have on the SMFT1000. So ensure that you download that data to the TrueTest software before you reset those file numberings. You can reset the device to factory defaults. You can go in and check what certificates the SMFT1000 has if you need to show, say, an inspector that this is certified for use in a certain region. That's where you would find that information. And then finally, you have the licenses. The other thing in the menu screen is the help section. Here you have the same graphic diagrams that you have when you select the info button. So if I were going to do the auto test, I could go to the auto sequence, view that, and the device is going to show me how to set up my leads when I'm going to conduct that test. Um, you can go in and look through this individually in the help section, or anytime you change the dial to a new test, if you hit the info button, you'll see this screen as well. So you can get it in both places. That's all the information contained in the menu of the SMFT-1000. Please join me for other videos when we'll look at the other tests you can conduct with the SMFT-1000. Thank you.